Uh, sometimes when finding the amplitude of the current or the potential difference is a little bit hard. Okay, so we we can find the root mean square value of uh, this current or the potential difference. The root mean square value is with the one that we can measure using the multimeter, the ammeter, or the voltmeter, and etc. But then, before talking about the root mean square value of a function, you should know how we can find the time average value of a function first. For example, if I have function here, okay, depending on the uh, variable t, okay, so in this time, I mean, uh, okay, so this t is with the time, and then this the function just look like this. We want to find the time average of this function between uh, interval from the t1 and then to the t2. Okay, we just want to find this average of this function. The question is how? <coughs> uh, we can use uh, this relationship to find the time average. So let's say that uh, the area under the average value of this function is going to be equal to the area under uh, the ft graph okay so what is the average value of this function so if you look at this graph right so you can see that uh, from the t1 to the t2 so the graph will cover from this position and then go up and then go down so now you can guess that the average value of this function it should be somewhere right between this line and this line okay so this will be our case so let's get that the average value is just I don't know, maybe here. Okay, this will be the average value of the function. Should be somewhere here. <coughs> so let me just add uh, this dash line to here as well. Okay. So the idea, I mean, to solve this one is that we can guess that the area of this average value function must be equal to the area under the uh, under the FT graph. Okay, so uh, let's color the picture. The area under the F average, right? So let's say that to be uh, maybe red. Okay, let me use it. This one. Okay, this will be the area under the the average value of this function, okay, which is the square as you can see. So now we can say that uh, this area, right, just equal to the f average, and then times okay, this will be the uh, this uh, this length, right, and then times this length, which is equal to the t two, and then minus the t one equal to so now the area under the ft graph let me just uh, color with the blue should be here and then to this okay that's it so you can see that this function just look weird okay so uh, we can find the area using the integration of the function so here we have uh, the integral of the ft and then dt okay so this will be uh, the area under the ft graph so just start from the t1 and then to the t2 then Finally, we can get that the average value of this function, right, is going to be equal to, okay, 1 over the uh, t2 minus t1. And then the 
integral uh, from the t1 to the t2 of the ft and then dt and that's it so now we have equation that we can use i mean to solve for the average value of the function actually this technique you have seen already when we uh, when we talk about the momentum and the impulse right we talk about the momentum and the impulse if you remember when we have uh, the graph between the force and then uh, the time right we have a graph between the force and then the time so the area under this graph is going to be equal to the impulse and then we can find the average force so using this equation as well <coughs> okay so let's look at the ex example uh, question is we just want to find the average value of the side theta for the one cycle for the one cycle just mean from the zero to the two pi or maybe from the two pi to the four pi so that's called the one cycle okay so let's guess first we just want to find the average value of the side right for the one cycle you can guess that the answer should be equal to zero so why is equal why is equal to zero because this part for the first half of the cycle is positive so now for the second half is negative right and then these two values just be the same so when we add up these two together it's going to be equal to the zero okay so that's our guess uh, but now okay so let's compute so we say that we just want to find uh, the average value of the psi theta right so then from equation so let's make that the t2 equal to the 2 pi and the t1 equal to the 0 okay so we have the 1 and then over the 2 pi minus 0 and then make the integral from the t1 which is equal to the 0 and then to the t2 which is equal to the 2 pi uh, of the psi theta and then d theta right equal to okay uh, 1 over 2 pi so just leave it like this okay integral of the psi theta equal to what it just equal to minus the cosine theta right and that's it so now we just plug in the value from the 0 and then to the 2 pi so this is simple uh, cosine theta, cosine 2 pi equal to 1 and cosine 0 equal to the 1 as well so when both of them start to each other you will get the answer equal to the 0 okay so this will be the answers <coughs> another example so now okay what happened if we have the absolute value of the psi function again we just want to find the average value of the absolute value of the psi function for the one cycle okay so first of all let's consider the graph of the absolute value of the psi function the graph just look, just look like this okay so you can see that this negative part will be uh, uh, reversed to, to be the positive right so that's why the graph looks like this and positive and then positive again okay so let's be here okay so then you can see that if we consider uh, the graph from the zero to the pi or from the pi to the 2 pi or from the zero to the 2 pi the average value should be the same right because I mean this section this section or this section just look the same so then either hand on the hand if we just want to find the average value for the one cycle we can just find the average value from the zero and then to the pi and that's it okay and that's it so no no big deal so in this case we just want to find the average value uh, for this part okay okay so let's find the average value equal to so then again from equation right 
1 over the t2 minus t1 and this integral so you can say that the t1 equal to 0 and the t2 equal to the pi here so we can have the 1 over okay uh, t2 just pi right and t1 equal to 0 and then the integral from uh, t1 to the t2 and the function okay so the t1 equal to the 0 and t2 equal to the pi and we have the absolute value of the psi theta right and the d theta so don't forget that uh, from the 0 to the pi the psi theta is positive it means that the absolute value of the psi theta must be equal to the psi, the uh, the psi theta itself so here in this case we have that equal to the 1 over pi right and the integral from the zero to the pi of the psi theta and the d theta okay so integral we can get the 1 over pi and then we can have the negative the cosine theta integral from the 0 to the pi so then finally the answer is the 2 over the pi and that's it okay so the 2 over pi is about what uh, so let's let's compute 2 over pi right it just equal to the 0 0.6 uh, 0 0.64 0 0.64 so you can see that this value uh, this value just about 1 right because the maximum value of the psi function is 1 so the 0 0.64 it should be about uh, maybe here So this should be the 0 0.64 or the 2 over pi. Then this will be the average value of the absolute value of the size theta. Okay, next example. How about the average value of the size square for the one cycle? Okay the average value of the size square for the one cycle again for the one cycle just then from uh, from the zero to the two pi right but now again you can see that uh, zero to the pi and pi to the two pi just the same so it means that instead of uh, finding from the zero to the two pi we can just find from the zero and then to the pi and that's it okay from the zero and the two pi so now we just want to find uh, the average value only for this uh, region here All right okay the size squares theta and the average value right equal to 1 over t2 minus t1 t1 is 0 t2 is pi so we have the pi minus the 0 and then the integral from the t1 to the t2 t1 is 0 t2 is pi and then times the psi square theta d theta okay okay so now it's just the calculus part we want to make this integral so we need to use uh, ddt so let's say that uh, let me just write down here we know that the cosine 2 theta right equal to the 1 minus uh, the 2 and then psi square theta so here we have that the psi square theta is just equal to the 1 minus the cosine 2 theta and then over 2 okay so now let's just plug in this uh, this relationship to this uh, equation and then you can just make the integral equal to okay so if we plug in this one to this one so we have this number two here right if we go for the pi so we have the one over the two pi and then the 
integral from the 0 to the pi of the 1 minus the cosine to theta and then times the d theta right equal to okay so now for the first term integral of the 1 and d theta right equal to what equal to theta okay so if we just sub the pi to the equation we can have that it's going to be equal to the pi and that's it and then minus okay the integral of this one equal to what equal to the one half and then times the side of the two theta right and we need to sub from the zero to the pi as well uh, for the sub uh, for the substitution this one equal to the zero Okay, because uh, if we just sub pi to this theta, right, we have the sine of the 2 pi equal to the 0. And now, if you sub 0 to the theta, you have the sine 0 equal to the 0. So then, finally, you can get that the answer is the, uh, the answer is just the 1 half. Okay, the answer is the 1 half. So, now, try to remember this the average value of the side square is one half okay and also the average value of the cosine square is one half as well because the side theta and the cosine theta just different by the phase uh, the phase of the 90 degree right so this means that the average value of the side square and the cosine square must be the same which is equal to the one half so uh, the one half should be here, right? This is the one half. Oops, sorry. Okay. So this will be the average value uh, of the side square function. Okay. So now for this one, uh, the root mean square value of a function. Uh, we use the symbol as the, let's say, uh, the F and then RMS. So now this RMS just stands from the root mean square. Okay, RMS, root mean square. When we want to, uh, to find the root mean square, right? Then we need to interpret this, uh, the meaning of this word from the back and then to the front. So, the first step is we need to square function first. So, if we have the function f, we need to square the function to the f square. And then find the mean value of this square function. So, we just find the average, right? And then take the root. So, in this case, it's going to be the square root of the function and that's it okay so this can be the meaning of the root mean square value of uh, the function so just square the function first and then find the average and then do the square root that's it okay so example find the root mean square value of the side theta for the one cycle again if we want to find uh, the root uh, the root mean square value of the side theta right so if we use this one we say that we need to make the square of the function first and then find the average value and then take the square root right this one okay but we know that from the previous uh, questions right from the previous example the average value of the side square function is equal to the one half. So let me just sub the one half into this value. Okay, this will be the one half. So then finally, we can get that the answer is the one over the square root of the two. Okay, one over the square root of the two. Okay, so before we move to the next example, Let's consider the meaning of this. Uh, from the previous example, 
we find the average value of the sine theta, right? So you can see that we get the answer to be the zero. But when we find the root mean square value of uh, of the sine theta, we get this number is not equal to the zero. So that's going to be the advantage of the finding the root mean square value. Because I mean, sometimes, right, we have the function, which is the average equal to the zero. So uh, it's usually to be the current or the potential difference across the loss. So now you can see that it's really, it's quite difficult and unnecessarily, right? I mean, to use the average value of this type of the function. So the best way to solve this one is we find the root mean square. So it means that if the function has the positive part and negative part, it means that we just square it first, and then find the average, and then take the square root, and that's it. So now in this case, the function is not equal to the zero anymore. Okay, so that's be the good thing of the root mean square value. And also, as I mentioned already, uh, the root mean square value is going to be the value that uh, the device can be measured. For example, the multimeter, the voltmeter, and the ammeter, right, can be uh, can 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 measure this value of the current and then of the pressure difference across a load here. Okay, next example. You want to find the Lumin square value of this function. So let's say equal to, okay. So we need to find the Lumin square value of uh, this one and this one because I mean these two just multiply together, right? So multiply together so we can just find the mean uh, square value separately. So it means that we need to find the root mean square value of the voltage amplitude here, the W naught, and the root mean square value of the psi of the omega t plus the phi, right? Equal to this is constant, it's just a number, okay, it's constant. So it means that the root mean square value of the constant must be equal to the constant itself. So it's just equal to the delta v naught as usual. But now for this one, right, the root mean square value of the psi omega t plus phi. So we can compare to the previous example, we can think that the omega t plus the phi here just equal to the theta, right? So it means that the Lumin square value of the psi function here must be equal to the 1 over square root 2. Okay, just the 1 over square root 2. So then we have that the Lumin square value of delta V equal to the voltage amplitude, delta V naught, and then over the square root 2. Okay, and that's it. Uh, we know that in Thailand, right, we use the voltage, I mean, uh, equal to the 220 volt. Okay, we use the voltage equal to the 220 volt. So this value can be measured using the multimeter or the one meter, right? So this, what is this value? This value, again, it's just the root mean square value. Okay, it's just the root mean square value. Then, if we just want to find the maximum voltage, or we just, if we just want to find the voltage amplitude, right? The time we're not here. We can have that. Okay, so now for the time we are uh, root mean square value equal to the 220 volt, right? We can have that. The time we not the voltage amplitude equal to, okay, to this value. 220 and then times the square root 2 right times the square root 2 which is equal to okay, 311 311 volts and that's it and also don't forget that if we have the 
cosine omega t plus the phi. The luminous square value of this cosine function must be equal to the 1 over square root 2 as well. Okay.